Welcome to John Michael's Rockbox. I'm your host, John Michael. I get to host this show that, well, it's a show about you. If you're a musician, if you're a solo artist, if you're a painter, uh, if you write books, your dance club, well, I'd like to hear from you. Send me your information to jmrockbox at mcaet.org. All right, we'd like to hear from you, and somebody will get right back to you. Now, also, if you'd like to watch the show, simply go to mcaet.org forward slash watch, and you'll see all the variations on how you can watch the rock box. And while well, this show really wouldn't last without you, so we do definitely need your donations, and visit mcaet.org forward slash donate. We'd like to welcome you to the Rock Box, and with that being said, let's head on over and meet our guest. And welcome to the Rock Box. Welcome to John Michael's Rock Box. I'm your host, John Michaels. Good to have you back. Now, this year promises to be a lot of fun. We're going to, of course, stick with our musical uh, aspects and bring in a lot of great bands, solo artists. Uh, we got some great ideas in mind for this year. As a matter of fact, this year, we're going to bring something new, and we're going to kick things off in a different bit of a direction. Now, I've always been a fan of comedy, and as I'm sure you probably are too. So we got ourselves, and we are very blessed, thank God, that we are able to have a, this fine comedian, actor, writer. He's been on The Tonight Show multiple times, Last Comic Standing, uh, Comedy Central, and it... Well, just thanks, God, for this guy. And a big welcome, would you please, Mr. Ty Barnett. Everybody, how you doing? How you doing? Thank you for having me. Um, let me let me get a few things out the way. Up top, my full name's actually Tyrone. Yeah, 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 see? Somebody grabbed their purse. Um, <laughs> Let me say something. The name in Ireland, just so you guys know, uh, means inspired and prone to creativity. Ah, that's right. Uh, in America, it means we're not hiring. So it's a little, little different. I am from Chicago originally, born and raised, um, but I pay child support in Seattle. So I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I pay child support. Um, see, that's a little different. See, the lady's like, oh my God, why are we supporting him? Uh, but no, I, 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 like I said, I am. I live in Los Angeles now, though, which is great. I've been in Los Angeles now for like, eh, I would say about probably ten years. And here's the thing: I love living in California because I get to do things in California that I couldn't do in Chicago, uh, like hiking. <laughs> That's right. Ty Barnett hikes. Yes, I do. Um, see, I could tell y'all that. I couldn't tell my friends in Chicago that. I was like, look at this crocodile Dundee dude. <laughs> But I do hike. And here's the thing, well, let's be honest. There's certain things that people of color can't really brag about doing that uh, some of y'all, uh, not a color, can. Um, <laughs> like hiking, canoeing, gathering your own granola. Uh, I don't know, you, you pick it, right? I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. Y'all anyway. laugh, but somebody's like, how do you get granola? Hmm, it's just there in the store next to yogurt. Um, but here's the thing about living in California. You get spoiled sometimes by the sunlight and everything. It's always sunny and everything. Example, went hiking one day, and uh, a couple days before this hike, it had rained. And my friend was like, it's, a, it's the worst weather ever. It's the worst weather ever. Like, and it's rain. You know what I'm saying? But I get it. It's California, and it looks nice so much of the time that when it doesn't, it kind of stands out. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like being at a strip club, and the lights accidentally come on. <laughs> like, oh, is that a dude? Uh, so no, I love I love living in California now, but it's, it's fine. And uh, I'm an adult. I'm a grown man. Uh, I'm getting older, which is fine. I'm just trying to get used to the things that come with that. Um, like I'm 40. All right, I'm just so you guys know. Uh, which I'm I'm cool with that. I'm just not. I don't know if I'm used to the reaction of being 40. You know, like I, uh, there's good and bad. On the good side, I get people like, hey, embrace it. 40 is awesome. You know when 40 is awesome? When you're 50. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll turn 50, look back at 40, and be like, yeah, that was awesome. You know? Then I get the other side. I did a college show, Let It Slip Out That I'm 40. Yeah, college show, Let It Slip Out That I'm 40. Girl in the audience is like, ew. <laughs> like, really? 
my age is nasty. Are you serious? You don't ill with age. That's what messes with somebody's head. You say ill when you step in something. <laughs> like, ill. Whose 40 is this? Someone dropped their 40. You got 40 all over my shoe. Uh, but I'm adjusting. Here's the thing. Now, here's what I've accepted. I will tell you this. This is what I've accepted being an adult. I don't need a six pack. I don't need it. Ladies, I tried. I did everything they said you should do. Not eating after 8 o'clock. Come on, really? I'm a comedian. As long as there's Captain Crunch and soy milk, that's impossible. <laughs> Stomach issues. Uh, I tried everything, though. Pilates, Pilates. Farted in my own face. <laughs> Which is humbling. I'll be straight up with you. It changes you as a person. And part of me died that day. Um, everything I did, I tried, every, I tried that insanity workout. I was clinically dead for three minutes. Uh, so Ty Barnett does not need the six pack. I just want to be shirtless sexy. That's it. I'm going for shirtless sexy. Fellas, this way you can take your shirt off and your lady's not disgusted. You know what I'm saying? You don't get a, a gag reflex like, oh, I should have made better choices. Um, you know what I'm saying? Candles lit, music's playing. You're like, <laughs> she's like, okay. <laughs> Hurry up, though. This alcohol is wearing off. They say, uh, they, say, uh, they say the sex drive changes when you get older. No, sex drive is still there. I just don't drive as fast. Um, this is the thing. I've gone through different levels of excitement when it comes to sex. As a teen, it was like, uh, like an exotic food. I heard so much about it, I got to see what it's like. In my 20s, it was like fast food. It's everywhere. Got to have it all the time. Now, uh, it's like cupcakes. I don't need a cupcake every day. But I do get excited every time somebody offers me a cupcake. I'm like, hell yeah, I'll take one. Sprinkles? Of course. But I don't feel like putting the same effort into getting cupcakes now. You know? I'm like, let me get this straight. I got to mix and bake this? <laughs> uh, nah, I'm just going to watch cupcake videos. So, so like I said, so I'm cool with being an adult. I'm, you know what it is? I, I'm, I'm trying because I got to force myself to, to stay in shape. That's, that's the hard thing. I'm, my, first of all, here's the thing. Okay, because I, I play basketball with these kids. I play basketball with these kids. They're like 20 years old. I don't know why I do it. But, I, you know, I do it. And let me tell you something. First of all, the motivation of a 20-year-old in the gym, way different than mine. Way different. They walk in the gym. They're working on being the next LeBron. They're working on being the next Kobe. I'm working on my cholesterol. <laughs> I had a donut last night, and I'm trying to really just get rid of that. You know what I'm saying? Metabolism is slow. The recovery time is different. Recovery time of a 20-year-old, miraculous. They could twist the ankle, put a piece of gum on it, and be cool. One kid last week broke his arm, ripped it off, grew another one. I'm like, really? Same tattoo and everything? So I got to do what I can to stay in shape. It's fine. I have kids. I have two daughters. Same mom. Um, thank you. Racist. Um, you see that? I got kids. So same mom. Are you serious? You better take a picture of him. He's like a black unicorn. So here's the thing. Uh, I got kids, and nothing makes you want to stay in shape more than having kids. Because kids have no filter. They just say what they see. My daughter saw me changing my shirt one day, and she's like, Daddy, are you full? <laughs> you ever have a moment where you had to think before you spoke? That was one. Because honestly, when she first said it, my first thought was, this bitch just called me fat. <laughs> but that's my child. I'm not going to talk to my child like that. So I do what I can to stay in shape. It's fine. I love my kids. I love my babies. I still call them my babies. I still call them my babies. Here's the thing. I love them, but I am, I'm pretty sure that they're not totally prepared for life. Okay, all right. If you got kids, then you know. Like example, my oldest, uh, when she was 17, you know, because my kids are 20 and 16. Yes, lotion. Um, <laughs> that's right. They say black don't crack, right? I think God gave white folks the benefit of the doubt, gave us good skin. Um, some people laugh, but they thinking about that. Like that might be how it worked out. That might be the deal. But no, uh, so here's, here's what I mean by when kids don't, aren't totally prepared for life. My oldest, when she was 17, we suggested that she get a part-time job. 
You know, like McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> I would have said, that's beneath me. <laughs> really? My 17-year-old who had never worked said McDonald's is beneath her. I'm like, were you secretly the CEO of a company? <laughs> and this is just a hard transition for you? Like, you don't have a foundation for anything to be beneath. This is the foundation that you would put something beneath. <laughs> and here's the thing. I'm, I, I know my kids don't have a concept of money, so I'm trying to find an electrician uh, who will wire the house to where only the stuff in their rooms don't work. <laughs> you know? Like, the light's off. Not down here in Pay Billville. <laughs> Everything's working in Pay Billville. I know my kids don't have a concept of money. My youngest asked me for some Jordans. Let me tell you something. I haven't had a pair of Jordans since 1990, and they were $100. But I said, you know what? It's my baby. Go ahead and get her some Jordans. $400. $400. You ever try to keep a straight face when somebody says something that crushes your soul? Because she said $400. I was like, like I froze. My body tensed up. Like my eyes watered. I peed a little bit. $400, do you understand? Michael Jordan is the only athlete on the planet whose shoes cost more the less he plays. How is that even possible? You can get a pair of Allen Iversons at Chuck E. Cheese for 15 tickets from Allen Iverson. Um, that's so bad. One day I'm going to do that joke. Allen Iverson will actually be in the audience. It is not going to be great. So, yeah, but like I said, I, I love my kids. People keep asking me, do I want to uh, keep trying they say, don't you want to keep trying till you have a boy? Uh, and I'm like, they're not baseball cards. <laughs> you got to pay for each one that pop out. I can't be like, nah, dude, I already got two of those. You can go ahead and put that one back. I can't. So to me, uh, I got to think it through. And now, ladies, don't get me wrong. Y'all awesome. I feel bad for y'all for the pressure that you get put under to have kids. Because it only comes from women. You know that, right? It only comes from other women. No dude ever pressures a woman into having a kid. And no dude ever pressures another dude into having a kid. Two dudes could be locked in a room for 20 years. Never once will they be like, when well, you gonna have some kids, bro? <laughs> That's never gonna be a conversation. If you're a woman over a certain age without kids, other women are like, I'm just, I'm just, what's wrong with you? <laughs> if you're a dude over a certain age without kids, dudes are like, how did you do that? Like it's a video game cheat code or something. Like I hit that X, Y, square. I still got twins. I don't understand. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it through, man. I'm, 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 I'm waiting to see. Um, relationships. I don't know if y'all out there in relationships and stuff. I got nothing against them. Straight up. I got friends that have been in long relationships. So, you know, they try and take that next step. You know, counseling. So, um... I, I, I can tell you, here's the thing I learned. I was in a really bad relationship. I was, my, it was a horrible relationship. We argued all the time, all the time, long arguments. Like, like you shouldn't have to take a break in the middle of long. That's how I learned. Okay, let's meet up in about an hour. Uh, we'll take it from I'm a piece of crap. <laughs> I'm just saying it should be more of a dialogue than a point. Uh, but I learned some stuff, though, ladies. Okay? I learned some stuff, though, ladies. One, um... I don't believe in hidden women, not at all, not at all. But I will trip one. <laughs> Saying there's never a reason to put your hands on a woman, but there might always be a reason to be like, boop. <laughs> now you arguing with gravity. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, I, I, and, and I'm cool with it. I don't like the games that people play when you break up, okay? Like the leave behind game. You know, that's where you leave some, you know, that's where you leave some of yours behind at their place. Something to remind them of you so they have to call or come by. You know, women will leave behind like a pair of panties, a, a bracelet or something. Guys will leave behind like a like a son or a daughter. <laughs> you know, yeah, tomato, tomato. It's, 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 it's. You can always tell where somebody is in their relationship by how they talk to each other in public. Public is the key, okay? Because when you first meet somebody, you never say the first thing that's on your mind in public because you still like them. You want to get to know them, you know what I'm saying? But let some time go by. Year one, if they say something that's kind of uh, uh, off, you're like, oh, that was awkward. <laughs> let some time go by. You're like, did that dumb stuff come out your mouth? Are you stupid? Their actions affect you year one to years down the line. Year one, if they piss you off, you don't tell them that they pissed you off, you tell your friend. 
girl, you not believe what he's done. You do not believe what he did. No, it's fine. We're going to know each other. It's fine. We'll, we'll work it out. Let some time go by. He's like, girl, you not believe what this dumb. You do not believe what this dummy did. Yes, you. I am talking about you. Yes. I will follow you in the room. Thanks a lot, you guys. I appreciate it. It's me. It's Ty Barnett. All right. Adios. Oh, good. Well, welcome back to the Rock Box, man. You know, this, this, is, a, this is a great change. Uh, Ty Burnett in the studio. Man, you hey. know what? Hey. You're one funny guy. Thank you, sir. It's, okay, you, we're going to get into this whole thing about comedy because I'm only main have dealt with musicians. Okay. Okay, so I've throughout the years, though, in the radio business that I've been, have dealt with comedians because we have a, a comedy place of several of them in Monterey. And so, but this is actually the first on the show. So welcome to be. See that? First. Huh? I'm breaking ground. I'm breaking ground. I'm breaking ground. Breaking yeah. ground. This is cool, man. And I'm like I'm like the Rosa Parks uh -huh. of comedians <laughs> in this in this area. So you guys, it's historic. Put this in the time capsule. You saved this one. All right. <laughs> it's gonna be on for a long time. <laughs> so where are you from originally? I am originally born and raised in Chicago, uh, but I live in Los Angeles now. Right. And and I tell people, here's the thing, when, and I didn't realize this until going to another place. Chicago does not have the best reputation. <laughs> uh, I didn't I didn't realize that. Like people would ask me something like, oh, you from Chicago? What street gang were you in? Huh? And I'm like, what the hell make you think I got that kind of dedication and team spirit? <laughs> <laughs> I, right? I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not that dude. I'm not that dude. But that's why I was born and raised. Uh, and then I joined the military, and uh, and then I got stationed uh, in Washington State, and yeah. that's where I started comedy at Seattle. You started. In, okay, so okay, you led this. How how hard is it to start in the comedy? I mean, how did you even know that you wanted to do comedy? Ooh, wait. You know what? It. <sighs> Okay, it's, it's a two-part thing, okay? okay. Um, I, I've always thought about it, you right. know, and, and my very first time actually performing on a stage wasn't even com it wasn't even stand-up. It was uh, me and a friend of mine in eighth grade, and my memory isn't the greatest, but for some reason I remember this. <laughs> in eighth grade, we did a routine of uh, Abbott and Costello's Who's On First. Oh, that's hard. That's crazy. exactly that's right. That's hard, man. And think about this as a, as an eighth grader. First of all, I don't need, to this day. I don't know how I pulled it off, <laughs> but we we did and we didn't mess up. We people laughed, and it was, I remember I was wearing this Cubs jacket, uh, and I forgot what what he was wearing. But uh, that was my very first time performing. But it wasn't stand up. And then I would always watch. I'd watch Pryor, Carlin, right. uh, Cosby, all of these guys, and I would go to the comedy club in Seattle, um, the Comedy Underground, and. I would sign up for the open mics, and every time it came close to them getting close to me, right? I would get the jitters, and then two or three people before me, I would check it out. Oh, <laughs> and, really? And I would leave, but I, now here's the thing. Part of the thing that helped motivate me okay. uh, was I lived in Tacoma, Washington, which is 30 minutes away. So that's a 60-minute commute each way. Right. And after three or four times of turn, and doing that, practicality came in. I said, man, I'm wasting a lot of gas to go yeah. up here and do nothing. So I decided to finally get on stage and do it. Got there, got there, told my first joke. I actually lost the best, my best, my best friend, God rest his soul. And when that happened, that was the extra push to say I better do something with my life that I've always wanted, yeah. and it was stand up. Wow, wow, that's gotta be tough. I mean, 16 it, years later, huh? look at him. And now you're doing like. Uh, spokesman for oh my god, dude! Various you, commercials. Mm, it's been it's been a journey. I started my very first television appearance was Star Search. Hi. Uh, now with Ed McMahon. I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm not, not that old. old. <laughs> Just a few gray hairs. In there. <laughs> That's Just kids. Dry. <laughs> um, but yeah, my story. <laughs> but uh, with Arsenio, the the revamp with Arsenio, the one that was on CBS. Right. I was actually the first comedian to win in the comedy category. For, for Star Search. Um, and then from there, some people at Comedy Central saw me, so I did a premium blend. From there, that led to uh, Comedy Central Presents, my own special. Yeah. And then I started, uh, that's what caught the eye of the people at Last Comic. Then I got on Last Comic, and you know, a lot of people knew me from that. Right. You know, right. They, they, that was, that's why I actually got me out there to the main mainstream. Uh, and so, yeah, I've just been doing stuff since. And acting has been in the last 10 years or so, uh, Till Death, 
with Brad Garrett. Right. Uh, right. I had a reoccurring role on that show, so I've been in there a few times. And Samantha Who with Christina Applegate. Which, let me tell you something, as a huge Married with Children fan, right. I was ridiculously nervous when I got that gig. Because we were shooting in a couple days. Right. And it's like, yeah, don't, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. A couple days go by, nothing, no rehearsal, no nothing. So I finally call on my way to the studio, to the studio to shoot. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, you're just gonna go there, run through it a couple times, wing it. And I'm like, this is Christina Applegate. I do not know, I, I right. don't want to pass out. But she was very sweet. <laughs> uh, it was cold that day. I remember it being cold. And the only thing that helped me get through it was that I was trying to keep warm. So, wow. So, <laughs> so keep your mind off that during right. the show. That's, That's crazy. Right. <laughs> so yeah, man. So it's I, I've been blessed, man. And. Um, so yeah, I've been acting and still going on the road, but that's why I started this tour, uh, the comedy tour that I'm going on, which starts to tomorrow, uh, because I still love stand-up. This is, you know, I love, I, I'm in love with stand-up. That's what I do. Right, uh, right. Uh, and so I've been blessed enough to still be doing it, 16 years old. Yeah, you know, gotta give us all gifts for something. Right. Yeah, and you found yours, and that's a good thing you did. You're a great comedian, man. I mean, standing out there, doing what you do, is this like a, a how long does a tour last for you? Well, this tour is only four days. Thank okay. goodness. I like sleeping in my own bed. Yeah. So, um, but I have, at the, at the height of my touring, uh, I was in a different city every day for like three weeks. Whoa. Three weeks straight. And, and man, you build up frequent flyer miles, but you realize how stupid people can be really? in airports. It's ridiculous. People still ask, do I need to take my laptop out? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's been like that for 10 years. Yes. Yes! It hasn't changed. It's, it's <laughs> changed. 10 years. That only thing I will say is like when they're raiding though, the, the, the threat level has been in orange for a long time. Yes, it has. Yeah, they need to change that. Make it a, something it, uh, or change it to an animal. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, threat level is a turtle. It's a right. turtle. A little yeah. slow paced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, it's, so this tour, I wanted to do things better and so far we have, we picked four dates. Um, right. And, you know, because we're all we're all uh, a little bit older. Yeah. I ain't gonna say what. Some of us. But uh, right, <laughs> but we're at this point now where, you know, we, you know, my kids, you know, they have their own lives a little bit more now. But I still like being a dad. Sure. So I want to spend more time with them, and 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 uh, so comedy, the acting and stuff has helped me build the tour this way. Right. To be able to go on the road this way. Well, that's kind of a cool thing. I mean, you know, because family is yeah, it's really important when. You got a lot of time you're spending on the road, you know, missing the kids, missing the, you know, oh, the family goodness. in general. Yeah, well, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, as I say, that's just got to be a little hard. I mean, it, it is when your kids are uh, are little, and that's why I said I made sure that I was there mostly when they were little, little. Sure. Now they're 20 and 16. I'm like the third option. <laughs> yeah, all right. They don't really. I'm the dad comes in and is like, hey, what's up, dad? Cool. Hug. All right, great. Boom. Love you. Boom. Peace. I'm going to do some other stuff. You know, but I've been gone. Uh, But I, you know, I came to see you guys. That's <laughs> been gone for a while. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so, go ahead. So no, it's, it's it's been an adjustment, but it's it's I I always um I always I you want your kids to always want to be around you because you like, oh my kids always want to be around me. Oh, yeah. And then I realized when you know when we were kids we didn't always want to be around our parents. So no, I totally get it now. Or your siblings at the time. Take your brother or your sister, why? Oh my God, dude. Oh, my mom made me drag my brother with me everywhere, no matter what I was doing. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, come on, I got this stuff to do. But now <laughs> I totally get it, because I, I actually do my kids the same way. Do you? When my, when my kids were like, hey, don't ever leave without your sister. You stay, uh -huh. y'all stay together. Period. Do that, do that little ground kick off. Oh, man, right. dad, jeez, you always got to had to do what you got to do it. Uh, yeah, hey, you got to learn, right? Exactly. So do you do you get a lot of your uh, stuff for, from, like, your kids to talk about on comedy? It's from my life. Uh, I think when most comedians start out, they talk about what is the easiest thing to talk right. about, which is, I mean, yeah, you do, you know, uh, fat jokes, sex jokes, whatever you think is the easiest thing to do. Once you develop your voice and, and you, you feel like this is my time on stage, right. so let me give you guys a part of me. And when I started doing that, it just worked out better. And it, it started with my kids. I, would, I honestly started talking about them as they were little. And over the time, all the things that would come about from that, I got to talk about these things in my life and these oh. things in my life and these things. So it opened up so many other options. Right. So a lot of my material starts with them because that's part of what 
you know, what they are. But then I branched out in learning how to discuss me the way that uh, I am as opposed to, uh, hey, duh, 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 yeah, like, sure. uh, you, what you see on stage, you guys, that's me. <laughs> I, that's really the stuff that I deal with. That's not made up. Ah, so, so, so that'll lead to the t timing, right? Timing and delivery? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is kind of like a kids watch this too, and it's kind of a teaching school. Suggestions about timing? Here's, I always tell people this, because I, I get questions uh, from up-and-coming comedians about what they should talk about. I can never tell you what to talk about. That, that's all you. Whatever you think is funny is funny. I will tell you, do what you think is funny, and then that way it will help your timing. You ever been around somebody or told a story to somebody about something that happened in your day, right. and you didn't mean for it to be a joke, you're just telling them the story as it happened to you, and they're rolling, they're just on the floor like, oh my God, and you're not even trying to do it. Right. But that's your natural voice. Yeah. That's what's making them laugh. So your timing has to come from a, a part of you that's so natural that you can talk about almost anything and people will get it. Like, I've, I'm telling you, I, I did a show, I used to do, I used to try to match the energy of whatever comedian was on stage right. before me. Right. Like, if they were high energy, I'd think, okay, now I gotta yell and I gotta do this. That's not me. When I'm talking to you and I'm telling you something, I'm telling you in this voice, sure. and this is how I am. So for me, to translate that on stage, it just plays better for me. Right. So if you are that type of comedian where you're frenetic, and it's like, everything is like this, then that works for you but your base should always come from what's natural to you, and that will help your timing. That's yeah. the biggest thing I, I've ever noticed from people. Yeah. Because I've seen people who don't have the greatest jokes, but they got, man, their, <laughs> their timing is, is impeccable, man. It, it's crazy to me. So, and then I've seen people with great jokes, with no timing, and they fall flat. Oh, man. It's the same thing with radio. I mean, you, you, learn, you learn your groove. It's, you got that voice, by the way. Thank you. How do y'all do that? How do the radio people get that? I know. We always <laughs> make fun of that when it's it's a lot of cigarettes and whiskey, but it's not true. <laughs> Every you can always hear that radio voice. In, you in my beginning years, I was like this. You know, <laughs> people thought I was a girl. Really? But, oh man, it was bad. Oh wow. It's wow. just over the years. I I don't know. It's the constant running around night. Like, I don't know what it is really. Maybe you just even your ahead. inflection is like, "Hey, how are you doing?" Yeah, it, it, hi, it, it how's it going? <laughs> just kidding. Love it. So, uh, can we get a website for you for, you know? Okay, here's here's the, here's, here's the pitch man. Here's the pitch man. Here we go. Ty Barnett the pitch man. Uh, the website is up officially. It's tybarnett.verb, v i r b .com, tybarnett.verb.com. Um, and I'm on Facebook as well as comedian Ty Barnett. I'm on Twitter. It's uh, T Barnett 23. I tried to get Ty Barnett. Somebody stole Ty Barnett and tried to sell it back to me. <laughs> yeah, my mom. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> she's a hustler. What can you do, right? Uh, so that's T Barnett 23. Uh, the, the Divided Comedy Tour is on the road now. Go to the evolution, theevolutionofcomedy.com to get tickets or, or tybarnett.verb.com and you will find me there. Wow. And I got business cards, mama. <laughs> yeah, huh? That's right, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming Thank on you. the show. No, no, thanks for having me. I appreciate right. it. Hey, good. big congratulations for Ty Barnett being out here today. Our, our, our first change, our first comedian to be on the Rock Box. And then, you know, we're going to tell all your friends. Rock Box, Ty Barnett. Check me out. And I'm going to tell all my people there to watch these guys and listen to the guy. You know his voice, and you can't miss that voice. Thanks for hanging out at the Rock Box.